stocks rally on Wall Street. The Nasdaq hits a record high led by NVIDIA and Microsoft, while the S&P 500 is on the brink of crossing the 5,000 mark. Asian markets too trade mixed, while the GIF Nifty is indicating a higher start for the Indian market. Crude prices rise. Brent is above $79 a barrel as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu projects a proposal for a ceasefire in Gaza. Low production from the United States also pushes prices higher. The RBI will announce its monetary policy decision later this morning. A CNBC TV18 poll expects the Monetary Policy Committee to hold rates steady. 100% of the participants polled expect a status quo on rates and on the stats. Startup consumer products is revenue and margin beats estimates, but an exceptional loss leads to a profit miss. Power Grid's profit and margin too beats street expectations. The company has also raised Capex guidance to 10,000 rupees. In key earnings to track Apollo Hospitals and Grassim from the Nifty 50 will report third quarter numbers today. Also watch for numbers from LIC and Zomato. Hey guys, good morning and welcome to Power Breakfast. I'm Pavitra Parekh. Those are the top headlines that we're tracking for you. This Thursday morning, the handover from the, from the US has been very strong and you have most Asian markets which are seeing at least some green right now. So what's leading the gains this morning is the Nikkei market. That is up uh, very sharply. It's up almost 500 points right now. By the way, this market, you know, for all its wild swings for the year, it's already up around 9%. So that's the kind of move that you've seen in the Japanese markets. Some of the others which are seeing some green, you have Kospi trading around 20 points higher. Shanghai also just about managing to hold in the green. But some of them, for instance, the Hong Kong market is seeing a decent amount of red right at the start of the trading session, around 7 tenths of a percent lower on the Hong Kong markets. And uh, you also have the Straits, which is just mildly in the red right now. So just around 10 points lower on the Straits times as well. The Taiwanese market is shut for a holiday today, so no rates coming through from there. A pretty mixed picture across Asia, but let's also bring the gift nifty up for you. It is indicating a start maybe 45 points higher, 48 points higher is where we're at on the implied open for our own markets. And yesterday we shot absolutely close, right? So it'll be important to see if we can hold on to these higher levels and maybe build on to these gains as well. But that's what's going on across the Asian markets right now. I also want to go back and look at the US because that's where we got quite a solid session. So you had Wall Street, which ended higher with the S&P 500 almost at that 5,000 level like you can see on your screen. Just five points short of that. This is a record high that we saw on the S&P 500 on the back of very strong earnings that came through. The Dow Jones also added around 115 points, again at an all-time high there too. And the Nasdaq gained almost one whole percent, 0.95% uh, in the green at the end of the trading session. In fact, you know, it was the IT stocks which outperformed on Wednesday and tech giants like Microsoft, NVIDIA, both gained around 2% each. Like I mentioned, it was an earnings heavy day on Wall Street as well. So you had Walt Disney shares, which rose around 7% because the quarterly earnings came in above what the street was expecting. And the company has also slashed its streaming business loans. So that's, of course, something that the street really likes the sound of. You had PayPal also, which reported a better than expected quarterly earnings. So their revenue came in above what was uh, expected. But the shares actually came down quite a bit. The shares were down 7% at the close because the company issued guidance, which was below what was expect expected. So that is what happened with PayPal. And lastly, her shares of Arm Holdings soar after the third quarter earnings came in well above expectations. The company has also provided a strong forecast for the current quarter. And you saw the stock really jump on the back of that in after hours trading. This is a very recently listed company uh, in August of last year. And it's already been a huge wealth creator for investors. So that is what we got across uh, the US markets in terms of earnings and the stock moves. But let's listen in to Neil Kashkari now, the president of the Minneapolis Fred, uh, Federal Reserve, talking about his views in the US economy and the expected rate cuts for this year. Listen in. Well, we keep getting surprised in a good way that the economy is showing up to be remarkably resilient. Consumer spending is staying strong. The labor market is staying strong, as evidenced by the really strong jobs report on Friday. That's all really good news. And that tells me maybe monetary policy is not putting as much downward pressure on demand as we would otherwise think. And so given that, I think we can take more time, get the inflation data, see it continuing hopefully to come in uh, very attractively around our 2 percent target, it gives us more time to assess that data before we start reducing interest rates. And so I think this is a, a good problem to have, but we're trying to figure out some of these mixed economic signals. Sitting here today, I would say 
two to three cuts would seem to be appropriate for me right now. But again, I don't want to prejudge things, but that's, a, that's my gut based on the data we have so far. If we do see a big boost in productivity because of AI, for example, then you would expect a higher growth rate, which is non-inflationary, and that would be really positive. And then you would expect then the neutral interest rate would likely be higher in that environment. <clears throat> and then we would adjust policy to not try to tamp down growth, but just to respond to the economic environment. So in that situation, you'd see strong growth, not a lot of inflation, and monetary policy would be supportive of that. Mm. And so I hope that's what we all, Oh, in the end, I hope that's what we end up seeing. All right, that is the word coming in from Neil Kashkari, and that's what we're tracking as far as the global markets and opinion goes. But let's now talk about our own markets, everything that you should track from an India market standpoint, as well as the stocks that could be in focus today. We have Mangalam, Hormaz, and Upasna all joining us for the trade setup. Guys, a very good morning to all of you. Hormaz, let me come to you first. We were just going through the global picture. And really no complaints today. No complaints, absolutely. And the kind of global session that we had last night on Wall Street, it absolutely gives you no reason to complain because the S&P 500, just like the Nifty, has that habit of teasing market participants before a landmark. It made an intraday high of 4999 and fell just five points short of that historic 5000 mark. And just like India, the US is also a market where good earnings are getting rewarded. Disney, though the numbers were slightly subdued, but the uh, cost-cutting guidance that impressed the markets that the stock rose after hours, even arm shares rose as much as 40% in after hours trading because of some bullish management commentary before pairing some of those gains. Now, back to our own markets, just like as is the case before an event, the Nifty is keeping its cards close to its chest and it was just like that yesterday as well. No movement at all, the Nifty ended almost unchanged ahead of the RBI policy today and it continues to face resistance above that 22,000 mark. Why it also is facing resistance is because banks are not lending support whatsoever and that Nifty bank continues to remain the weak link. It gained 100 points yesterday but there was no support whatsoever from HDFC bank or ICICI bank, the two index heavyweights. What Lent support, though, was State Bank of India, and India's largest lender ended at a record high yesterday, and it's up almost 6% already this month. So some good moves there in State Bank of India, especially because it's been an underperformer in this PSU rally. What also did well were the smaller PSU banks, Indian Overseas Bank, Yuko Bank, Central Bank of India, all of them gaining between 10 to 15 percent and those stocks. But mind you, the stocks have a very low free floats. So we need to keep an eye out on that. Earnings reactions will come today from Tata Consumer, Lupin, JK Paper and earnings today from Apollo Hospitals, LIC and Grasim as well. And Asian markets are mixed, but the gift nifty is indicating a positive start for our own markets as well. Back to you. All right, positive start. Let's see if we can sustain or maybe build on those uh, levels as well. Ormas, thanks a lot for that. Uh, Upasana, let me come to you now. You know, Ormas was just mentioning all of the banks which have been a bit of a weak link. So we're going to watch for those. But take us through all of the stock-specific news that came through as well because a lot of the bigger earnings now. Well, good morning, Pavitra. First up is Tata Consumer. The uh, company reported a good Q3, might beat on the margins. The margins were at 15% versus the poll of 14.4%. Next up is Lupin. The company saw strong Q3 again, margins at 20%, which is highest in 10 quarters. And next up is Cummins. The company reported again a strong Q3, beat on all front, beat revenue, EBITDA or PAT. Uh, the company reported highest ever revenue and profit on the back of strong domestic demand. Next up is Manapuram Finance. The company reported an NII growth of almost 35% on one wide basis and NIMS to that 10 quarter high, somewhere around 15%. Next up is Power Grid. That will also be on our radar. The revenue is in line while the margins are above the pole. The revenue saw an uptick of 2.6% on one wide basis. Next up is Mangalore Chemical and Fertilizer. The company announces a merger with Pradeep Phosph Phosphates Limited. Next up is Pyramil Pharma. The US FDA has con conducted a pre-approval inspection of US facility from 29th Jan to 6th of Feb. On conclusion of this, the company has come up, uh, the US FDA has come up with three observations. Next up is BPCL. BPCL's joint venture, Petronet LNG, renews 20-year partnership with Qatar Energy. That's the reason the stock will remain in focus today. All right, that is a long list. Upasna, thanks a lot for getting us all of that action. Let me also bring Mangla in. He's looking at all of the cues from the futures and options space. Uh, Mangla, expiry day? Expiry day, indeed, and uh, event-heavy as well. We have the RBI policy, but yesterday it looked like a bit of a test match, you know, where both sides played well, and eventually it was a draw. So the Nifty, if you look at the intraday chart, you know, opened higher, thereafter went lower. At lower levels, we saw a bit of a recovery. 
with just about one point in terms of a change to show for. But the big trigger today will be the RBI policy along with the weekly options expiry. And yesterday we did see the FII's return to the selling in cash market, close to around 1,700 crore worth sold. And if you look at the top nifty losers, it would tell you that, you know, the selling was in the IT stocks, uh, tech, um, Infosys, TCS. These are typically FII selling stocks as well. And that's interesting because at any given point in time, one of the sector continues to underperform, which leaves the Nifty in a bit of a range itself. If you look at the futures, the open interest on the Nifty bank changed a lot more than the Nifty itself. And then you corroborate that data with what the FIIs did in index futures. For the second day running, their pair trade of long Nifty, short Nifty bank continued. They sold about 1253 crores in index futures on a net basis. But in that, the Nifty purchase was 364 crores. Whereas the Nifty Bank, they sold for the second day running, 1600 crore worth selling in Nifty Bank futures. Ahead of the RBI policy and weekly expiry, we have 22,000 call on the Nifty, which is higher in open interest. And on the lower side, we have the 21,900 put, which also is seeing a fair amount of open interest. For a premium of 50 rupees a pop, the street is playing for a range of 21,850 to 22,050 which is basically the high and low of yesterday's trading session itself. Just watch out for Delta Corp, Sale and Balram Porcini. All of them have entered FNO band today. Okay, Mangalam, thanks a lot for taking us through all of those cues. That is the trade setup as we see it this morning. We do need to get into a short break. But on the other side, we're going to discuss the important uh, cue that we're all tracking. The RBI monetary policy decision will be announced later this morning. So we're going to line up all of the expectations from our poll when we come back. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast. And like we mentioned, the key cue today is that the RBI monetary policy uh, will be dis uh, will be announcing its decision today. So a CNBC TV18 poll expects the Monetary Policy Committee to hold rates steady, while 100% of the participants poll expect a status quo on rates and on stance both actually. So Ritu is here with all of the highlights of our poll. Ritu. I'll start with the backdrop because this monetary policy is coming just a week after the interim budget, which had two positive surprises. The government stuck to the path of fiscal consolidation and it also lowered its market borrowings for the coming fiscal. Growth seems to be holding up and core inflation has declined to sub-4% levels. The US Fed has ruled out any rate cuts in March and the global economy also seems to be heading for a soft landing. So with no big reason to cut or hike rates, the street is going to focus on liquidity more than rates in this policy. And that is because liquidity conditions have persistently remained tight since the last policy, with some moderation that we saw recently. So how much liquidity will RBI provide and how will it provide it via the VRR rate or some other route? Any action or direction on this front is going to be very important. Now, on the rates, the MPC is expected to leave the repo rate unchanged for the sixth consecutive time because it's going to be hard to justify any rate cut immediately with inflation hovering closer to 6% than the 4% target mark. Now, all of our respondents said that the MPC is going to maintain the policy stance at withdrawal of accommodation. However, there are some economists which pointed out that there's a very small chance that the stance will be shifted to neutral what with the interbank call rates declining below repo rates. Now, 90% of our respondents expect the tone of the governor to remain absolutely even. Some are expecting him to sound a bit dovish to indicate RBI's comfort with the current growth inflation trajectory. Now, so when will the rate cycle turn? That is a big question. And according to our respondents, that window may not open before the June policy. Half the respondents are expecting the first rate cut in the second quarter of the next financial year and some in the first quarter itself. Now, the RBI is unlikely to tinker when it comes to the inflation estimates of FI24 as well as the coming few quarters, according to our respondents. But when it comes to the growth forecast, while the majority is leaning towards RBI retaining that 7% forecast for FI24, you have a third saying that the RBI could perhaps revise it upwards in line with NSO's estimates of 7.3%. So that is as far as the policy is concerned. Of course, we're also going to very closely watch out for any comments from the governor on Paytm in the press conference. 
All right, Ritu, thanks a lot for taking us through all of the highlights of the poll. We just have around two hours till we do get that decision and you can catch all of the action right here on CNBC TV 18. With that, we are going to get into a short break, but on the other side, we're tracking all of the cues from the commodity market. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still tuning to Power Breakfast and let's now bring you up to speed with the latest developments in the Israel-Hamas war. So U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, who is on a tour across West Asia to rally support for a halt in violence between Israel and Hamas, says a ceasefire is still possible. Blinken had talks with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas in Ramallah and with the Israeli Prime Minister uh, and President on Wednesday. And addressing the press in Beirut, a senior Hamas official confirmed that a delegation would be travelling to Cairo today to pursue a ceasefire uh, talk with the Egyptian and Qatari officials. Hamas has also proposed a ceasefire for four and a half months, during which all hostages would go free, Israel would withdraw its troops from Gaza and an agreement would be reached to end the war. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, however, rejected Hamas's proposal and said that a total victory in Gaza was within reach and reiterated his resolve to destroy Hamas. So those are all of the latest updates that we are getting. Uh, Manisha also joins us now. Uh, Manisha, the immediate news is that, you know, the, the ceasefire was rejected at least for now. What is the kind of bearing that that is having on all of the commodities as well? Well, if you look at the, the crude oil prices, we've seen some strength come back into this because of uh, the talks of Gaza and uh, ceasefire really not working out. So you are looking at prices inching back to that $80 a barrel mark. The other thing really is about the IEA statement, and this was at the, at the Goa IEW conference itself, where IEA says that India is going to be the largest driver of global demand growth for crude between 2023 to 2030, and that clearly has been supportive. Also, when you look at the U.S. fuel stocks, well, we have seen gasoline and distillate stocks decline anywhere between 3 to 3.2 million barrels in the previous week, and that in turn also seems to be supporting markets. In other markets, it is uh, gold, which seems to be holding firm ahead of the Fed official statement, but it is uh, copper, zinc, which also seem to be trading firm. All right, Manisha, thanks for bringing us that quick update on what's going on with some of these uh, various commodities. We'll, of course, keep bringing you updates on this through the day as well. But for now, let me also bring you some news from the world of politics. The Uttarakhand State Assembly has passed the Uniform Civil Code Bill through a voice vote a day after Chief Minister of the State Pushkar Singh Dhami introduced the bill. With this, Uttarakhand becomes the first state in India to execute a Uniform Civil Code. The UCC bill, which will now become an act, proposes some significant changes on marriage, adoption and inheritance of property, which were earlier all ruled by personal laws of every religion. So the UCC bars bigamy and polygamy and makes it mandatory to register a live-in relationship within a month. Under this act, a woman will be entitled to claim maintenance if she is deserted by her live-in partner. The Uttarakhand government has also made it clear that members belonging to scheduled tribes community will remain out of the purview of the UCC. All right, so that is an important update that we wanted to bring you. But with that, we're completely out of time on this edition of Power Breakfast. We leave you with the news that the Asian markets are pretty mixed this morning, but the gift nifty is implying that the start for our own markets should be about 50 points in the green. Thanks for tuning in. We have Bazaar Morning Call up in two.